Have you ever wondered what squirting actually is? Or if you have the ability to do it? Maybe you're wondering if you can make your female partner squirt. Well, today I have a guest who's going to explain it all. Or at least what we know so far. Hi, I'm Thomas, and I'm a sex researcher. And hi, I'm Dr. Jana, and I'm also a sex researcher. Dr. Zahana Vanglova is a New York City-based sex researcher, educator, and relationships coach. Her work has appeared in Cosmopolitan, Playboy, Teen Vogue, The New Yorker, and Psychology Today. She also started The Casual Sex Project, a website where readers submit their true stories of hookups and co-hosts the Science of Sex podcast. But it doesn't even stop there. She also has an online course all about how to become a squirter or a female ejaculator. So I've invited her here today to give us all the dirty details on what squirting is, why it happens, and what you can do to either unleash it or control it. Every year when I'm teaching my college class, I always have at least one student that asks me about squirting. And a lot of the time I'm kind of thrown off and really don't know exactly how to respond. So I thought that we could start off with two quick things or two, I guess, sort of basic things. What is it and where does it come from? <laughs> well, squirting is the physical expulsion of liquid from the urogenital area among vagina owners. That's the basic definition. Something, a liquid coming out during sexual activity from somewhere it, down there. <laughs> From somewhere, somewhere down, down there. That's okay. the technical term for what squirting is. <laughs> because, and I'm saying this because we actually still are debating in in the scientific literature and the scientific community exactly what it is and exactly where it's coming from. And the answer to that is that it seems like there are a couple of different types of squirt that are coming from a couple of different places. Okay, so <laughs> there's no a, simple answer here. That makes me feel so much better about not having a direct answer for <laughs> that specific question. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to look it up, and if you've looked it up too, then you have seen that there are tons of different places that it says on the internet. So you're saying that there are a lot of different places that maybe different portions of it <laughs> come from. We are currently at a tentative consensus in the scientific community that we're probably talking about two different types of liquid that are coming out of two different places. The first one is a small amount of milky white substance that is made in the skin's glands, which is the equivalent to the male prostate. Sure. And they are basically surrounding the urethra. There are the, these little glands that are surrounding the urethra, and then they uh, create this milky white substance that has high levels of prostate-specific chemicals. And they they uh, come out either on in their own ducts. They have these little tiny openings uh, that that come out of either side of the vaginal uh, opening. Okay. Or sometimes they drain directly into the urethra, and then they come out of the urethra. So very complicated. It seems like not yeah, there's all, a lot going on. It seems like not all vagina owners even ha have skin's glands to begin with, and those who do, sometimes they have these individual ducts that lead out of the body on their own, and then sometimes there are no ducts and they lead into the urethra and then come out. Whatever they're, whatever liquid they're making comes out of the urethra. So that's the first liquid. We're still at the first one. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering. I was like, so is that both of them or just no, one? No, that's okay. still one, the white milky substance. Sure. Now that's probably not the squirt that most people think of when they think of squirting. They think of that gushing. Yeah, squirt, like what you see in porn. What you see in porn, yeah. And that, Which is not always reality. Yes, porn <laughs> definitely not always reality. And that's the same for squirting uh, when it comes to porn. But that that amount of liquid that has to pass through the bladder. There's no place in the body, anatomically speaking, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has the ability to contain that much water or has that much water or that much liquid pass through. And so I think that there is currently a consensus that that does come from the bladder and through the urethra and comes out of the urethra with or without the white milky substance, depending on whether that does exist and drain into the urethra of that particular vagina owner, but um, depending on when the person uh, went to pee before the squirting, how much they were, they were hydrating before that and all that, it may contain more or less traces of urine. Okay, so there are traces of urine in it, 
but it's not entirely urine. Yes, yes. And it, it depends. Like sometimes it might be a lot more like urine if mm -hmm. if uh, the person hadn't peed in a while and they, they squirt, then it might be more urine. If they just peed and then started having sex and the bladder filled, filled up and then it comes out, then it's going to have pretty low concentrations of urine, but you know, a, a tiny little bit. So there's definitely at least a little bit of urine in there. Could be Seems more or less depending on a few different factors. How do we not know for sure? <laughs> like that, like I, with everything that we are able to do with science and all the things that we do know it seems like if if as you see in porn how there can sometimes be this like gushing of fluid how can there be that much fluid in the body in one place and have us not know where it's coming I know, from right it there is so little research on this it's it's really frustrating there have been at this point maybe eight or nine studies in total published in the academic literature that's it that have that's it eight or nine that have gotten it yeah, someone who squirts gotten the sample mm -hmm. and then tested it and most of those have one or two research subjects in those studies. Wow. I th the largest one has something like seven or eight uh, squirters in the sample. That's it. Okay, so for people that are watching this that don't know a ton about scientific research, which is fine, that is the general person, um, eight or nine studies very, very, very few studies. If you were to go onto like Scholar, Google, and type in any search term, you're probably going to come up with thousands of studies. So eight or nine, not very many. And most studies have well over 20 participants. Some of them that I do have over 100,000, which is a huge sample size, but just two or three for a sample size is ridiculously small. So this is really showing that the science has not really been done to, to show us exactly what it is or where it's coming from. This is so frustrating that I decided together with another sex educator, my partner in the sex education business, Kenneth Play, we decided to do something about this. We decided to do an event where we get 50 vagina owners who have never squirted before. So 50 separate people. 50 separate people okay. who've never squirted before and have 10 different people who are pretty good at making people squirt, try to get them to squirt so that we can try to answer another question that has not ever been answered, which is, can all vagina owners squirt? We absolutely have no idea. We're gonna collect those squirt samples, send them to a lab, and test them. And we're gonna have more samples tested than all the studies ever conducted together. Wow, that's, an, that's great. That's an awesome idea. So you're gonna yes. be answering multiple questions, not only what exactly is it, but mostly made up of for the most people, or what it might generally be made up mm -hmm. of for the most people. And then also, does everyone who has a vagina have the ability to squirt? Which is actually something else I wanted to ask you about. And it sounds like maybe we don't know. We have no idea. We literally have no idea. Because in order to do that, in order to find out, you have to at least know where exactly it's coming from and what exactly sure. it is, which as I said, we're still debating, so we don't know and or you would have to have a study where you brought people into the lab mm -hmm. who have never squirted before and you try to get them to squirt there's one study there has been one study one. yeah there's been one study who has done that where that has been done not in the u.s shocking shocking right it was done in europe okay. in the czech republic about 20 years ago at this point 15 20 to 20 years, years ago. ago yeah they had about 30 or so uh women who had never squirted before they brought them into the lab, the researchers tried to get them to squirt, and they managed to get 37% of them to squirt. Okay, so about after, a third. About a third, after four sessions up to an hour long. They four tried. sessions <laughs> up to about an hour long, so kind of training them how to do it. The researchers were doing it to them. Oh, so oh, so they weren't training them how to do it to themselves. No. The researchers were doing it to them. To okay. them, yeah, using either wow. hands or toys, and uh, they tried hard. I mean, four hours is four hours total. That is, is a, a long, long time. time. Will that generalize? Were these researchers just not very good at getting people to squirt? Was it the not the right setting for mm -hmm. many vagina mm -hmm. owners to feel comfortable to squirt? We don't know. It's never been done bef before or since, which is why. Uh, what we're planning with Kenneth Play is going to be pretty revolutionary. 
Now, is this the same or is this different? I believe it's different from the online course that you have that helps people learn to become squirters. Yeah, that's different. So that's an online course that people can buy, any, anyone can buy on the internet, that goes through a, a series of videos that can teach people how to do this or how to get a partner uh, to do this. Because at this point, we know that there are certain types of stimulation mm -hmm. that will get uh, many, many people to squirt. And some techniques that are somewhat more reliable and some less. Although, there's actually quite a bit of variation in what gets people to squirt. Very often what you see in educational videos or instructional uh, tutorials is that really vigorous kind of G-spot stimulation, whether it's with hands or with a toy or with something, but it's like very vigorous pushing up against the that front wall of sure. the vagina. That's not always what does it for people. It, I am currently running the world's largest, most comprehensive survey on squirting ever conducted. And I just went through the first thousand responses that we wow. got. And there were so many people, so many vagina owners who said that that type of stimulation doesn't get them to squirt. It's actually clitoral, external, mm, clitoral mm -hmm, stimulation mm -hmm. that gets them to squirt. I'm not going to give you any any data, any results yet, sure. because we're still in the process. But. Well, it sounds like you're also sort of theoretically leaning on the side of that it may be possible for everyone or at least the majority of vagina owners to be able to do that. And sort of with the help of this video series, people might be able to find out if there's someone that has the ability to. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> um, I'm going to put all of those links below. So if you're someone who thinks you might be able to do it or would like to learn and see if you can, that link will be down there for you below. So kind of on the same topic, we're seeing people with vaginas. I'm wondering if there's any research um, that actually explains if post-op trans women mm -hmm. are able to squirt or not. I have no idea. I've never seen any of that ever discussed in the academic literature, and I don't have any personal anecdotal mm -hmm. knowledge of that. So if you know, let me know. Yeah, put it in the comments <laughs> below, email me, let us know. We would really uh, like to know that and be curious if you are someone that fits that. Um, if you would talk to us about it, because I think that would be really interesting to know, and I think probably a lot of people are curious. Yeah, please take the survey. It's squirtingsurvey.com, and you can take it whether you are a squirter or a non-squirter, whether you have vagina or a penis or anything else. <laughs> you, anyone can take the survey, and I would love to hear from people who are trans and trans women, trans, trans men. We certainly know that trans men with vaginas can and do squirt but I actually don't know about the physiology of how things get put together after, after uh, creating a vagina, a new mm -hmm. vagina. I don't know how that works, whether it's possible. And it would be difficult because we're not even sure exactly where it comes from to know what, what parts necessarily have to be there for it to mm -hmm. work. Yeah. It seems that a lot of straight men are really obsessed with this idea of making their partner squirt. Um, and then a lot of women will also want to learn maybe how to squirt to satisfy their man. Um, I'm wondering why you think there might be such a large premium on the ability to do this. Why are people obsessed with wanting to do it? There really seems to be currently like a cultural obsession with squirting. I'm pretty sure porn is driving that mm -hmm. to some extent because it's been very commonly portrayed in porn and so when people watch porn and, and men are going to watch and, and we know that men watch porn more often than women and so I think they get exposed to that but the reason they then get so obsessed with it is because they believe that that's a sign of an orgasm they think that mm. if a vagina owner is ejaculating is squirting that means they're having an orgasm and they also think, and it's a better orgasm. It's a stronger orgasm. It's a more intense orgasm. And they must be doing something, something right. right. And like, if mm -hmm. they're able to provide that, then they must be a better man. Exactly, a better lover. And it's a very, they think it's a very obvious, very visible mm. sign that their partner had an orgasm, whereas otherwise they could be faking it and you can never know, right? It's wrong. The thing with this, it's a, the problem with this is that it's actually not accurate. 
Mm -hmm. There are very, very many cases of uh, vagina owners squirting and that not being an orgasm. Is it more um, pleasurable? As, as I'm looking at the data that we already have from the sure. squirting survey, it is often pleasurable, but it's also often not an orgasm. And depending, it also depends on the type of stimulation sometimes, because what we're talking about is literally a physical expulsion of the liquid. Mm -hmm. And that can come, that can happen during an orgasm, it can, it can happen before, it can happen after. What most of the vagina owners are saying is that it's really important for them to be very sexually aroused and then being able to build up to it, especially if they're voluntary squirters, if they can control it to some extent, and so they can kind of time it that the squirt comes out as their orgasm happens. But the two are very often separate. For some people, they are kind of connected and always happen together. But for many other vagina owners, they do not happen at the same time. Or they even, if they happen at the same time, they feel like something different, like a different release versus the subjective experience of an orgasm. And then there are many cases when it's actually unpleasant the sensation, the physical sensation of squirting is unpleasant and even painful. Oh, wow. Okay. Kind of uncomfortable, like not like really painful, but kind of uncomfortable. And what many of my participants were, were saying is that sometimes when, when men can get so focused, so overly focused on trying to get them to squirt, they try to do it too quickly without having had that time, taken the time to really build up the arousal. Sure. No fun at all so please take your time and then they get so fixated on it that they forget that this vagina is attached to an entire body that, that it's not just this one <laughs> yeah. thing that has a per yeah. that has a singular purpose exactly they're like it's very one note like even when i do orgasm from squirting i want other se sensations in my body i want other pleasurable types of experiences so don't please don't get too fixated on it and no, it is not always an orgasm. So just because you saw someone squirting does not mean they had the most mind-blowing orgasm mm -hmm. ever. So it sometimes can be with an orgasm, but sometimes before, sometimes after. Mm -hmm. The arousal has to be high, and it's not necessarily representative of having some amazing mind-blowing orgasm. So if you're able to provide that for someone or not provide that for someone, it may not have anything to do with you. Uh, so it's a you great summary. Yeah. <laughs> you also mentioned that some people find it painful or uncomfortable. So if you are someone that maybe is an involuntary squirter, so someone who isn't trying to, but it just naturally happens, is there a way to stop yourself if you wanted to? We actually don't have a very good answer to that question. We are just so many asking, unanswered questions. So many. Please take the survey <laughs> <laughs> so we can answer these questions. It does seem like a lot of people have control, can build up control over it. And then when you do have control for when it happens, you also have control for how you can prevent it from happening. What uh, the, the, the squirters in our study that say they do have control over it, we ask them, okay, what do you do? How, how do you do it? How do you stop yourself from doing it? And it's a combination of stopping the stimulation that is leading to squirting and then also kind of clenching the pelvic floor muscles so that uh, you you don't expel it because the opposite of if you're actively trying to get yourself to squirt what a lot of vagina owners will do is kind of bear down on those on those PC muscles like when you're trying to pee faster like you would do that or just kind of relax and let go so instead of either relaxing or or actively pushing mm -hmm. you clench as if you're trying to stop the pee. It's so funny because as you're telling me about it, I'm like Trying physiologically do it, yeah. <laughs> like doing it. I'm like, can I do that? Can I stop things? Can I, hmm, how in control of my body am I? Which also, if you were having sex and like in your head about trying to stop this or hold that muscle or like there's so much going on that that mm. has got to be really difficult and perhaps just take you out of the moment if you're trying to control all of these internal things at the same time. It does, and that's what a lot of our participants were saying, that having to kind of think about stopping or what is going to happen, when is it going to happen, is taking them out of the moment. And They're so, not enjoying yeah. it. And there were many people who said that they didn't have control over it and would really like to have control over it because mm -hmm. it can get messy, it can get really wet, you don't necessarily want to sleep in that 
right. wet uh, bed afterwards. They, many people feel embarrassed and ashamed, especially if they feel that it's peeing and, and sometimes it is more yellowish and more like urine and sometimes it isn't. But so you can have a lot of these, these unpleasant uh, things associated with it. And there are many people who would like to not squirt. <laughs> That's very interesting because it so often just seems to be put out there that people want to be able to do it and other people want them to be able mm -hmm. to. So that kind of leads to my next question. If someone is an involuntary squirter um, and maybe doesn't have that control over it, when do you think is the appropriate time for them to tell a new <laughs> sex partner that it might happen or that it's going to happen because as you were saying you know for some people it might be like it's seen in porn where it's just gushing which could be problematic or a lot of cleanup or just things that go along with with doing that <laughs> that's a great question when do you when do you say something about it especially if you're a frequent mm -hmm. involuntary squirter right that it's, it's there's a pretty good chance it is going to happen even the first time you have sex then with with a partner and some people did say that having sex with a new partner when it's new and exciting is more likely to lead to to squirting and then some some people said that actually being very comfortable with a partner is what was uh, making it more likely uh, for them to squirt. But yeah, if, you, if you're someone who is pretty likely for that to happen and yet don't have control over it, I would say mention it before before it happens. Do mention mm -hmm. it before it happens because uh, some, some, of, some of the partners that you're having sex with are not gonna have a positive response. There were so many participants in, in our survey saying that they've had a partner react negatively to that and especially if they were surprised if all of a sudden you know they got squirted all over their face or all over the genitals and they're like what right. just happened and I have no idea what just happened like <laughs> and why didn't you tell me that this happened and there are a lot of partners who said that they've had the experience of being squirted on without having any prior knowledge that that was going to happen and that was not always a positive experience so do let people know ahead of time now exactly when i don't know depending on how the mm -hmm. how the encounter envelops and um but do bring it up before it happens so that's so that's really interesting too because there's like there's bring it up before it happens but then you also run that fine line of like how you sort of preface it as like this is going to happen or this might happen or sometimes this happens and hoping that like the person that you're with doesn't get fixated on trying to make it make happen. Make it happen. Oh, so true. And that very common, very I'm, common. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> oh, this person does something that I've always wanted to see before. I have to make them do it. I'm very excited for you to get all of this data, so please fill out this survey if you can, and I would love it if you could come back and share with us some of these findings, because it seems like although there's some stuff we know and we've answered a lot of questions, well, you have, and I've followed up on them, um, it seems like there's still a lot out there to find out. So why don't you go ahead and tell everyone where they can find you. To take the squirting survey, go to squirtingsurvey.com. I know, perfect. And you can find more information about what I do on my website, drjana.com. You can listen to my podcast, The Science of Sex Podcast, and you can check out The Casual Sex Project if you want to perv on other people's hookup stories or provide your own. You can also find me on all social media, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Dr. Jana. Do you have additional questions about squirting, maybe something we didn't touch on? Leave it in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and we will try to get back to you as soon as we can and answer some more of those questions. Okay, see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. I've got a lot of content in production and I don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And in the meantime, check out one of these other videos. And don't forget to send me your questions about sex to thomastalksabout at gmail.com.